Good morning. Good morning. Whoa, can y'all hear? She's not talking. About that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Jan, I'm going to look at you, and if you can't hear me, you just let me know because I can see you real clearly. Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I want to introduce my assistant today and, and tell you how old I am. This is my oldest granddaughter, who's 23, who just graduated from Pepperdine, and uh, she's taking a gap year because she's applying to go to dental school, and she has agreed to be my Vanna White, and she said, who? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I've, I've observed life enough to know that I, I got to enjoy almost every minute that she's here, because when she starts school, she's going to go back to California, I hear <laughs> and so I probably won't get to maybe see her maybe twice a year, you know. So while she's here, I'm enjoying her. So I hope you enjoy my Vanna White. She's going to be an artist. So, <laughs> so uh, welcome to this quarter. This quarter is a quarter for each one of us individual. To it, it's to help us grow and to get to know our Lord and His Word and to take comfort. This is me time. This quarter is sort of me time because it's all going to talk about the different attributes that God wants us to have as his daughters in faith. And uh, it, it's sort of what I call self-care. You know, we, we do a lot of things for other people and we're, we're really busy. But this is being still and know that I am God time. And you'll, I, I, if this lesson doesn't turn out to be valuable to you, it did to me, so enjoy. <laughs> I learned a lot, but I, this is sort of like a staff development because I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm not preaching, I'm teaching to the choir. And I know you all know so much of this, what I'm going to say is being repeated. But if there are a few nuggets along the way that help you draw closer to God and to be thirsty for his word, We've accomplished our goal today. So enjoy, sit back, and have fun. This is a time of joy because this is the time. You're, this is me time when you're learning how to take care of yourself and give yourself and you put yourself in God's presence. So our the theme that I want us to have in your head right now, your first your focus, is Psalms forty six ten. Be still and know I am God. The Holy Word is a gift from God. It's like waking up every morning to a love letter. You know, we all remember the days when we were you know, we were courting and we were, at, like with me, Doug was in Illinois and I was in New Mexico. And I couldn't wait till I got another letter from him during the summer. I mean, it was just so rich. It was just, it was a love letter. And I was, it made me happy and joyful. Well, guess what? Ladies, we have that available to us every day. God wants us to spend time meditating on his scriptures every day it's, as a love letter. <clears throat> he wants us to be thirsty for God's word. He wants us to be radical about it. When I say radical, that just means this is what, who we are. We're willing to die for it. It's the thing that's on our mind 24-7. It's what we want to teach our children. We want to teach our grandchildren. We want to teach our neighbors. We want to share. It's because it's we know that this is the way. That's why we want to meditate on the scriptures daily. And uh, so, our goal basically, we want to mature and see in seeing God and seeking Him. We want to mature in that habit. We want to love God, the Savior more. We want to glorify God. And of course, that sounds sort of familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> that that. We're seeking to know, love, and glorify God. That's the, the elders have asked us to put that into every part of our emphasis. I love you forever. That's one of the things God tells you. And every, every time you open your scriptures, that's what he's telling you. So I want you to think about it. And uh, Dace is going to pass out a handout to you. That, that gives you so you can take notes if you want to. 
and there'll be several things that's on this handout that will be valuable to you. But I want you to think about your top 10 scriptures, your 10 favorite scriptures. And if you want to, you don't have to do this because I don't want pressure on you, but if you want to, you can just list those 10 scriptures as you're being still, knowing that I'm God. What are the, your top 10 scriptures that you really think about? You know, if this world should turn as wicked as it looks like it might, we might not have the, the word readily available to us. And we've got to have it in our hearts so that we'll have things to meditate on and to think about to protect ourselves. My favorite scripture, and I think it's really funny that this is it, but I, I, I realize this is basically the scripture that guided me in rearing my four children because I thought it was so applicable to child rearing. And it's Psalms 1, 1 through 3. And it's, of course, this is David's first. I think it's interesting of all the praise and all the thoughts and everything that David did. The very, this is his very first thought from, of what he wrote. And uh, blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Okay, so you don't want to walk with the wicked. And I know my kids heard that many times. I'd say, they'd tell me something, I'd say, you don't want to walk with the wicked. The second is, you don't want to stand in the way of sinners. You don't want to hang around with the kids or the people who are sinners. And this applies to us too. But the one that I was really important to me in, as they got a little bit older and got to thinking, I think we all, I think the third part of this scripture is the one that applies to all of us. We shouldn't sit in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers, that's, a, that's an interesting concept. The antonym of being a scoffer is when you, when you think about it being your pride, uh, not synonym, one antonym, synonym of being a scoffer is being prideful. You think you know everything. You think you're better than everything else. And you, and you think everybody else is stupid. And that's the extreme. But you know, God's, he, this is what the scripture says. Blessed, which means that God loves us and when we're saved. Blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, who stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seats of scoffers. We need to not be prideful. We need to teach our children not to be prideful. But those who delight, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, and who meditates on his law day and night. And, you know, that's the thing. The scriptures is what we, that's what we should be thinking about. It should be on our hearts day and night. And I look at this, I feel like I'm talking to the choir. <laughs> I know y'all, but I think that's such a good scripture. To, I think we should have this one memorized. I think this is a scripture we ought to know because it's so applicable to every part of our life. But look at what God promises us. He says, the person who is like a tree planted by the streams of water, and this is where I was telling Brenda, her, letter, her lesson was so applicable to what we're doing today, is because we don't want to be the little cotton that's in the corner that doesn't get any nourishment. We want to be over here where it looks wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We, and the only way we can be full of that richness is if we meditate daily and on the word of God. And so... What he says is that that person who is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And, you know, sometimes we worry about that. Are we producing enough fruit? We don't have to worry about that. As long as we're meditating on the word, God's going to give the fruit. And that's a promise. That, that I, 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 get, I take a lot of comfort in that promise. And its leaf, leaf does not wither, which is the sign of the terrible cotton in the corner and <laughs> not on soil. And then I always think it's funny. I never, you know, God doesn't want us to, to you know, the rich man, it's hard for a rich man to go to heaven. But look what God turns around and does. He says, for whatever they do, they prosper. You know, when we look at our lives, and of course there's many definitions of prospering, but it's a promise from God. And, it, and I hope that word means that we have enough, or we have what we need. With everything happening in the world, we need to know God's promised us 
that if we meditate on his word and we, he'll give us, he'll make us flourish and we'll prosper. And then hopefully he'll give us enough wisdom when we have too much, we have more than we need, that we, that we have that. And so I always thought that was a good scripture for kids to know. And of course, the alliteration is here. They don't want to walk with the wicked and they don't want to stand with the sinners. And they don't want to sit with scoffers because then they'll be a withered leaf. That's not good. They want to be, they want to run with righteousness. They want to be delighted. They want to meditate on God's law to be a happy tree, a healthy tree. Uh, now, my little needs assessment after you've got your 10 favorite scriptures. How many of you came up with the 10 scriptures, the 10 commandments is one of them? Okay, do you know? Can you instantly say the two books in the Bible where you can find the Ten Commandments? Do you know that? I hope so. If something should ever happen in your life that's an emergency, they tell you that if you can smuggle a Bible and you can't smuggle the whole thing, make sure you smuggle Deuteronomy. Because Deuteronomy is critical. And if you can just have Deuteronomy, you'll be you'll know what God's word is in the Old Testament. And of course, in the New Testament, it's Acts. But anyway, I when I was thinking about this thing, uh, let me, I, you, I need to give you a little, Dad, should, could you give me one of those uh, thirsty books? This is the book that we're, we're basing a lot of the studies off of. It's, it's Hannah Hall's book. It's called Thirsty. It's a 12-week devotional. And uh, she's, she's saying that we should be very, very thirsty and She's saying that we should if we meditate on the word, that we should really have scriptures that we have that are readily accessible to us. And I assume that everybody would, when they listed the top 10, they'd do the Ten Commandments. But I found something really interesting. As y'all know, I like research. You know, I, I, I'm a statistician. I like to see accuracy. I look for patterns. I'm always looking for patterns. And I know. And I like to look at research and see if it's well designed and if it re really is telling us the truth. Because you can make anything you can say anything is a is a finding on a, on a study, but if it's not well designed, it's not valid. But uh, I thought it was really interesting because a group called the Women's Living Well Org decided to spend money on a grant to research the top 10 scriptures worldwide. They took the hits that came to the internet about scripture from every country in the whole world. And then they collected the data and they came up with the top 10 scriptures and I'm going to read them to you. And it's fascinating because we're talking a worldwide view of the Bible and their favorite, <coughs> what scriptures are the most important to for people. I think it's real important. I this first one didn't surprise me. And of course, did you have John 3:16 on your list? Because that's number one. The favorite, the scripture that was reported to be sought or had the biggest hit on the research was John 3:16. For God so loved, y'all say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish to have eternal life. So, you know, we know that one. So that's on your list, I bet. And I like the idea that Matthew 6, 33 was. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Y'all will read them with me. I like this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And then Jeremiah. This, oh, this is such a beautiful scripture. I can see why it's one of the top ten. Jeremiah 20, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Look at that. Give you a future and a hope. That God says he has plans for each one of us. And you know, we know that's true. Because the scripture says that when he knitted us together in our mother's womb, and plan the good works for each one of us. None of us are the same. We're all different. He has a different plan for each one of us. We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. We all have talents. And he has plans for each one of us. And so 
He plans for us to have a future and a hope. Of course, that's to live with him for eternity. Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love the Lord of God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Remember that. For those who are called according to his purpose. That's why we're called. We're called for God's purpose. And that's to live with him. And then Isaiah, of course, we have so many posters and pictures. And we have, we can buy this in small, large. You know, this, this scripture, this is so famous. Uh, Isaiah 40, 31. Raise your hand if that was on your list. Huh. We haven't done our list, have we? <laughs> I know. I thought you were talking. While you were talking, we were you have a team of ask us next week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's all more time. Okay. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. You know, we all know the strength, the strength and the uh, uh, eagles and how they can see so well. I can see why that's a favorite one. So those are the top five worldwide. I think that's very interesting. And then six, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You know, we're, we're a new creation. We don't care. It doesn't matter how old we are. We're new. I love that scripture. But I was surprised it's on the list. To tell you the truth. <laughs> that one, I didn't know why. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I know why this one is. Come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. And we are weary in this world today with what's going on. And God says, come to me. I'll comfort you. I'll give you the rest. And then I was tickled to death that Matthew 28, 19 was on this scripture list on the top 10. I mean, this is a valuable scripture. This is one we should commit to memory. We need to know this one. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? That the top 10, that, that one's in there, and it mentions the Trinity. And it explains the people who God is, God, the Holy Spirit, and his son. And then, so Matthew 28, 19. And then Philippians 4, 13. We, this is pretty common. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's what I said today as I started this lesson. <laughs> okay. And then Proverbs, of course, 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. That's that's sort of something you should say. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not with your own understanding. I want to ask, I want to show you something. That's Proverbs 3 5. I want to, you know, I wanted to give you some stats. I hope you understand those, why I'm telling you this. There are, right now, we think. Population wise in the world, there's 8.1 8 billion people alive right now in the world. And then uh, in the United States, we think there's about 340 million people. That's our population, right? 340. And then in Texas, and I don't think this is accurate, I think we have a few more due to our immigrants. <laughs> they say we have 30 million. But there's 30 million of us. That's a lot of people in Texas. And then you see the one. I want to tell you about how great your God is. Luke, do you, do you know what Luke 12, 7 says? Luke, we all that's a scripture we should always put in our mind just to comfort our heart. Luke 12, 7 says, God has counted every hair on your head. Now and as y'all know, I was getting ready to get this lesson. I got my nails done, got my hair done. And I talked to the hairdresser yesterday. I bought a shirt, shirt too. So I'm ready for this this preparation, this lesson. And uh, I said, I bet you have seen different heads of hair. And she says, yeah, I'm not a one of them's alive. And I said, you know, that's almost scriptural. Luke 12, 7 says that God has counted every hair on your head. And I think that's interesting. And she says, isn't that over here 8 billion 
and God has taken the time to make sure he has the hair counted on everybody's head. He knows that. He didn't have much problem with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tease my sister about that, but I don't know. <laughs> this chemo thing, her hair's get much thinner. <laughs> but anyway, um, but doesn't that make you just shake and awe? That God cares for each one of us so much that He has counted the hair on each one of our heads, and that, and you know, and that not a one of us. And she thinks I said, "Do you, uh, you know, when we go down to DNA, and we know that nobody has the same fingerprint, and, and I've been studying about twins, identical twins do not have the same fingerprints." And then Jeff was telling me, Daisha's dad. Uh, was telling me that they're going to change how they recognize us now instead of wanting our fingerprints. Mm -hmm. They're going to take a picture of our hands. Mm -hmm. He said, because everybody in the whole world, all eight billion of us, our hands are different. Mm -hmm. The length and the, and the shape. He said, they can, they can, that's how they can ID us now. That's the God that we're serving, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's the God who loves each one of us dearly. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I came up with another fact that just shocked me to death as I was studying about how to teach y'all about meditating on the scriptures every day. Did you know that the largest Bible factory in the whole world, you know what country it's in? China. It started in 2007. China opened the doors and said, well, we're going to build a big factory and they produce the most Bibles in the whole of China does. Isn't that shocking? And they opened that factory in 2023. God is doing marvelous things, as Dean said in his lesson Sunday. God is intentional. God is, has, has a plan. He's putting it together. And we can see it. Who would have thought that the largest Bible printing company in the world is in China? In name? But it is. I think we all need to think again, be still, and know that I am God. But I have a confession to make to you all. It's the thoughts from a busy Christian, one who has or has not. Always found time for daily scriptural and meditation. I need to tell you all the truth. I think that's the reason this lesson was so hard to fit, to prepare for myself in a way, because I knew it was true. I know more about the need for daily scriptural meditation than I had practiced. Most of my life, from the time I was about 10, I have lived a life that was rev that engine. <laughs> I've been a busy bee. I've always, I, I, I'm just made that way. I just busy, 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 busy. I enjoyed it. I went to work early. When I was, as I, every time I've ever worked, I, I'd be at work early. And I usually brought work home because my mind was running. I had things to do. And I'm sure most of y'all, some of y'all could identify with that. Uh, I thrived on getting the job done. And I probably practiced over commitment. I liked the adrenaline flow of, of, meeting the achievement markers I set for myself, and I hope it's not hereditary, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> However, one of the things I really enjoyed about teaching Bible school for children, and Danny knows this is real true, Danny and I talked together for years, and Pat and Garrett Kirsch and I have talked together for years. We know we enjoyed studying the Bible, prepared to teach for children. And I think it was probably because it was the time I could say, be still, and meditate on the scripture. And so if there's anything this lesson taught, I'm probably the one that's benefited the most because I realized uh, with some self-reflection that I probably should have been still a little bit more and know I am God. So if you're conflicted with the very same concerns of <laughs> exchanging incessant demands of work or being choked by life's worries or riches or just plain pleasure and I think we're being saturated with pleasure right now 
Hallmark is here. <laughs> you know, it's fun to watch Hallmark. You can you can waste more time with Hallmark. And I love it. Her mother bought me a blanket saying it's Hallmark blanket <laughs> and gave it to me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something I relax with. But Luke 18 says, yes, but I need to get busy obeying God's commandment. You know, I'm even busy serving God's, if God gives us command to serve others, and that keeps me busy too. But I've got to realize that probably I need to have more balance in my life. I need to be still meditating on God's word. And so that's what I'm going to sort of give you some ideas today. Um, this lesson is not wasn't prepared in any way to make you feel guilty because you're not re, you're not studying God's word enough. It's to encourage you and say, look what every day is. Every day is a present from God. He's given us a love letter to read the scriptures and to meditate and to you know, tell us how to live and be closer to Him, so that we'll flourish in our Christian life. So, and, and you know, I know y'all. You all are dear, honoring, believing Christians. I know you, you women. I'm blessed to be a part of this group. I feel that we all are thirsty for God's work. I really believe that. I think that's our heart. So what's keeping us from being still and doing daily scripture meditation, if that's, is that, if that's happening your why? Research says it is. That the ones that have researched the believers of Christians worldwide say that of the 112 hours that we're supposed to be awake every day that less than five hours of that is dedicated to studying the scriptures and i and i don't know what your what's happening in your life i know what's happened in my life but that's that's the statistics that that's the norm that it's rare that it they people we spend more than five hours a week studying the scripture and uh but an interesting fact that came out of this research found that the most constant, consistent factor in predicting the spiritual health of our children and our young adults was those who did regular Bible reading. And so if you want to help encourage your children and your grandchildren and them to be faithful, encourage them to do daily Bible meditation. And that, another statistic that I came across that I really did, I would, it surprised me, the generation that was born after 9-11 is called Gen Z, and that's the largest group of people ever to be alive in the world. There's more of them as a generation than, than you know, we've ever had in the history of man. And you know, those people know their electronics. They're addicted to them. This is, and we know that. Every mother who talks to you say, I can't get them off their electronics. The teachers say, We can't get them off their electronics. It's something that's infiltrating the brain. Well, we need to make sure that their electronics have lots of scripture on it. <laughs> and we teach that we're teaching them to meditate on God's word. We need to find every method, every tool, everything that we can do because that's the most important factor on whether children can retain their faith is if they are doing regular Bible meditation. So that, I think that's the nugget that I really hope we go home with because I think that's important. So I want to ask the question, and, and you know, I, I'm just making up what I thought might be the questions. I don't know what the real questions are, <laughs> but the one I thought, why not? Why are we not setting and meditating like we want to if we're not? Is it because the scriptures are so overwhelming? You know, there's 66 books, and when you read them, we do it ping pong, sort of. We'll, we'll get a plan, we'll read this, and then we'll read this, and we'll read this, and the dots aren't connected. We don't get the big picture, we can't. It doesn't make sense, and there's so many. We think, oh, this is hard. This is difficult. Is it, over, is it confusing? Is it long? Is it hard? Is it confusing? Or is it because we... Just are not taking the time because we found other things to fill in our time. Or is it because uh, we just haven't been still and that we need, is that showing up right? Yes, it is. <laughs> that we need tools, better tools and, uh, and methods. And that's what I'm hoping because if that's, I'm working on the assumption that if we, we get the right tools, 
will be more successful in meditating. And that's what I want to present to you. Uh, and, I, and the rest of this is just sort of use what's good for you and ignore the rest, okay? <laughs> but I thought these were really helpful tools. That you know, you, first, I think when we start studying, we need to know ourselves so well that we know how we learn best. There's no use struggling doing something you can't do. And um, I want you to pass out those Dacia. Sandra Sonia did the nicest thing for me. Her learning style is doing things. And she said, I've got, I've, I've prepared something for you. I want each one of you to take one of those magnets. She, she prepared it. She said, I won't have a magnet. And so she fixed 66 of these magnets. This is not my learning style. I don't, I don't own a cricket. I'm not, I'm not arts and crafty. I, it's not going to be me. But, but she loves it. She thrives on it. And so she, I want you to each take one. And what she did was that because she wanted you to know how unique you were to God, all of these are identical except there's one that's different. And she said, let them find out which one who got the magnet that's different. And so look at look at your magnet, look at everybody else's magnet and see which one if you if we can find the lady who got the one magnet. Charlie, you got it? I think so. Oh got a small pumpkin with puzzle dogs. I bet you got it, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that was she. She wanted us to do that. The how unique, how unique we are with God that we're oh, all. I thought that was so nice for her to do that for us. But that's because her style. I'll go back to the the her, You know, the, there are four primary learning styles, and you get to know yourself well enough that set yourself up for success. Don't try to do something somebody else's way. I can't stay up here and say, you need this or you need this. I can suggest ways, but you're smart enough to know what you need and what works for you best. So use your own style. But do know yourself well enough to know which style is yours. Some people need to see it, the visual. Some people need to hear it, their auditory. Um, and I think Kara falls in that. It's funny, I was trying to think of all different learning styles, and I thought, Kara's a auditory learner. <laughs> Some people are kinesthetic. They need to do it. They need to act it out and, and do it. Some people like to read and write, and that's me. That's my learning style. I can get lost in a book. I can get lost in races. I can forget to fix that supper. <laughs> and say, oh, you didn't eat? Because <laughs> I was reading or studying. That, that's happened to me several times on this lesson. I was in there. In my, I have a spot where I like to go. I have an office. And uh, and he'll say, isn't, isn't it time to eat? And I'll say, oh, we haven't eaten today. Because <laughs> I like to read and write. And then, uh, but you do, do know your learning style. And if you need help, Sean, there, there are diagnostic tests that can, if you haven't already identified it, which I, I suspect you already have. But I'm, what I'm going to do is give you four the four big types. And I'm only going to give you one or two examples of good tools for your learning style that I have come across that are really helpful to help you teach. And so take what's good for you and don't worry about the rest, okay? But if you're the big picture person, there's one of the ideas, and it's in your hand about. It's really important. At least you can have one of those. Uh, not that one. The other. Oh, do you have the one that has the picture of the books and its division? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's for the people who need the big picture. You know, this is what I I have also worked with adults who did not know the divisions of the Bible, and so, and uh, you. Do I need to? Is there one dog? Yes. Okay. It really is important, and and this is this is such a good handy. This is a good visual. You know, in the Old Testament, you need to know. And Dave, she's going to sing a song for us in a minute. <laughs> but that, as a child, she carried kite. She worshiped at South Plains and Terry, Terry Kite, I don't know if y'all know him, but he's written a book of 185 songs that teach Bible facts. And he's selling them, selling that book now. But he, they should got to have the real thing. He taught her 
And so she's going to sing this for us. But, you know, there's history in the Old Testament, the five books, and then, I mean, law. And then we have the history books and the poetry books and the major prophets and then the minor prophets. And when you've done all those and studied all those, you, you've covered the Old Testament. And the New Testament, of course, the gospel, and then history, which is Acts. And then the letters by Paul, and the letters that are written by others, by Paul to others, who wrote some to churches and some to others. And then you have the general letters, and then you have prophecy. And you know, this is a good organizer. If you're doing scripture, it'll teach you uh, the big picture. And uh, Asia, would you like to sing your song now? Because we, I thought this was real helpful. So this song is about the books in the Old Testament specifically. I'll try to sing loud, sorry. Okay. 512, 512, 512, 512, 512, five books of law in the Old Testament, followed by 12 of history, five books of poetry, major prophets, five, 12 books of minor prophecy. Thank you. <laughs> this, and uh, I've listed this as one of your sources because. I, I tried to get a copy of the book from here. They sold them all, and so they're going to have to repent print them. But I think it's valuable for all of us who have children or grandchildren. This book about, that teaches the facts of the Bible, and it's only cost, I think the book is for $4, but he has 185 books, songs that he's written that are like this that are for children that we can teach them to organize and get the big picture. Plus, we will know. We will be it. Another way. Is a is called uh, the story. And Ben is going to show you a copy of the story. <laughs> How many of you have a copy of this? Okay, as you know, for those who need to have the Bible in chronological order, so it makes more sense. That is an excellent source. So, in case you haven't had it. They should said that she they gave it to her the young teenagers in South Plains, so she had a copy of it. Mm -hmm. Would you please who is the author of that? I'm, I'm, I'm on the back row. My ears got wet waxing, and I really can't see her. Okay, Max Max Lucado and Randy Frazy. Okay. And I have it on your handout. Oh, okay. I put it on. I put it down. Uh, who? And, but then the, the other one that I'm sure some of you all have is the Daily Bible, the Chronicle Bible, this by Lagarde Smith. But you know, that's been around for a long time, hasn't it? And so, but have, how many of you have this one? Okay, that's a really good source. If you're the big picture person, I would suspect that's the Bible that you need to study out of to get it in order. And it will correlate with this really well, with the, that chart. So, that's one learning style. Now, a digital tool that goes along with this learning style is something that just became available this last year in totality. <laughs> and it's a, it's for, if you go online, how many of you are enjoying working on the computer so you can go online? Yeah, more than half of me, that's good. This is a, I want, and I gave you this site because this is so well done. And I was going to show it to you, but I don't have time because I talked to you. <laughs> but www.bibleproject.com has a short video that tells you, it, sum, it gives you the summation, it tells you who the author is, what the purpose was, where it was written, and then it does it in graphic form so that you can see it, you can hear it, and you can repeat it over and over and over. And it's cheap, it's free. It's online and it's complete. They finally finished all 66 books and then they have a lot of other resources. But the validity of that material is excellent. The accuracy of the material is very valid. So that's just, uh, that's my one recommendation if you need the big picture. Uh, it, they discuss the author, the background, the content. It doesn't cost anything. It also is helpful for you to use with your, your younger the people you influence that are younger because this is their learning style and they they like to learn this way that's how they've been taught it's a concise 
explanation of the background theme and its important concept of each book. And I gotta hurry, y'all. Oh, specific topics. That one was easy. This, and I, can you hold up God's promise? This is a book I think some of y'all, most of you have. If you need to study a specific topic, yeah. you know, you and you want to do a search. Of course, you can type it in on the on your on your computer, and you'll, it'll come up. But you don't know about the validity of some of the things you get, and you have to be wise enough to know that some stuff is not true. And and so, but the God's promises is a is a nice little book. And if you don't have it, I gave you the the so where you could get it. It's and that's only five dollars. Or you could use Strong's Concise Concordance or Vine's Dictionary, which I bet some of you have. At your house, but if you don't, you and I wanted to give you an example of that. You know, a lot of us are old, and we have gray hair, so I typed in old, I was looking for verses that had to do with age. And here are two of the sources Psalms 92 14 says, They will still bear fruit in their old age, they'll stay fresh and green, which means that God will bless us to be fruitful and we'll have. Regardless of how old you are, you have no idea who you're influencing. I had this happen to me two weeks ago. It was a funeral. And this young man walked up, and he's a pretty good looking, young kid. He's about 50 now. And he said, Mrs. Hamill, he says, You know what I have in my car? And I said, No. He said, You gave me a Bible when I was 12. Aww. He said, Do you know I've kept that Bible? And he said, I read it daily. And I looked at him and I thought, No, I didn't know. But you know, it made me happy. But you know, you you don't know. You do good things, you forget about. It. But God promises you fruit in season. And then Isaiah forty six four. Even in your old age and gray hair, I am He. I am He who will sustain you. And I think it was Doris that was telling me that one of her promises to herself as a widow was that she wasn't going to be afraid. She said, "I'm going to trust. I am He. He will sustain me." I have made you, I'll carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Isn't that comforting? I mean, that's why if you need to talk about a specific, something that's on your heart that you're worried about, that comfort or knowledge or whatever, you, you probably need to talk about specific topics. And I'm giving you examples of things that will give you that information, concordances. Then, uh, just make sure the important part out of this time is just make sure your sources if you're going online are reliable I can't emphasize that enough then I'm going to tell you about last week when we had our teachers workshop here I was uh, hosting a room and I was sort of tired that day Deb's been sick all week and I went in and I thought oh, this could be a long day it wasn't there were 12 of us, and, and those women had so much knowledge and experience and, and tools that we didn't even take breaks. We wouldn't go eat. We didn't go to do the devotional or anything. We shared knowledge because they were lo they loved the word so much. And they gave, they talked about this source. And, and it's funny because I asked Dewey and I asked Brogan this morning, I said, are, are you familiar with this? And they said, not much. I said, we're going to go look it up. I said, this is the rich source online that I've found. This is wonderful, and the reliability is high. It's very high. It's called www blue bible blue letter bible dot org. Is anybody who's worked with that? Oh, good. Two of you. Look at your age. <laughs> Y'all remember? Make sure that's the one that I want you to pass out this handout. They have a handout that. According to research, is the least effective tool in in all the way we uh, read the Bible is this handout. Uh, when you look at it, you'll see it lists one through three hundred and sixty five days and has the scripture quotes, but it doesn't tell you, tell you the day or the month. I mean, you got to keep up with it. And the research says that that kind of handout is not real valuable, but it's free and it's online from this. But everything else from www.bluebible.com is so valuable. There's concordances. There's interpretation of different words in Greek. There's, it, it, you just can't imagine that all that is there 
It's reliable and it is a tool of tools and it's free. So you can go through those until January and go through that way to go through this way. It'll work. Yeah. Right here. Interesting thing, this uh they they work from the King James Version. Which I think is interesting. But they said they did research and they said that 55% of the people who, who are studying the Bible worldwide use the King James Version. They, and then they have it available in the New International Version, which was 19%. I thought that was real interesting. Of course, there's, it is a trustworthy commentary. It's a good tool for word study if you're doing topics, for scripture cross reference. For multiple versions, commentaries, free. It'll give you a daily daily guide for it'll give you a daily today's promise devotional. And it has a daily Bible reading plan. And of course, it's just rich. I hope if you if you're if you're comfortable being online, I hope you can get acquainted with this one. This was really good. This is a very scholarly, in-depth resource. And Dewey said he thought we'd probably be hearing about this more because he thought it was he, he thought it was really interesting. Which one? The blue letter Bible, which is interesting, you know, because we always think the red letter is the word of Jesus, yeah. but this was blue letter, and they did it on purpose. Yeah. As a, but this is a this is a good resource. Now the the re the one method, and I think I have five minutes, y'all. I'm going to try to hurry. The one method that is the most effective for all of us is called journaling. But I thought that was interesting. It's so cheap, but it's only, and it addresses all the learning styles, and it will help set you up for success if you can motivate yourself to do it. You need to select your content. What is it? What you want to study, and then you need to select your the time. And uh, I want to make a comment that I read. It's hmm, the emphasis. Uh, Bible reading, the ping pong where you just read a list. And I, I read it. You know, Kay, when you told me you read you you read it last summer, you decided to read the whole Bible through and you got it done. And I, I really admire you for that. I appreciate it. But you know, if we don't have a purpose and there, this is a more in depth. It's, this is called meditation on the scripture, this method. And I thought it was so interesting. It's you, um, <clears throat> on journaling, you select what your scripture is and you try to make it short. You write it. And you say, you write, the, you answer the questions about who wrote it, where it was written, and why it was written. And you can get all that off on scripture or from your sources that you're using. If you can find that information. And so you, you sit it, you read it, you write it. And then you go, and then you meditate on it. You pray. Day two, you do your true meditation, meditating. You, enter, you start your entry on day two with the word every day that you're doing it. I'm sorry. I don't know why my, my mouse is jumping. I'll miss it. I'll quit touching it. You begin with the word yesterday. And you recur, you record for five to ten minutes. And that's all they said that's all you need to record and write for five to ten minutes about how this scripture impacted your life yesterday. You talk about did it encourage you in your high points? Did it encourage you in your low points? Your frustrations? Are the plans that you're going to do, the plans you did do, are the things that you are so sorry that activities that you they, did it increase your activities in the and made it where you were thinking about God all day and his plan and his intentionality of what he wants for you. And the research on this is really solid. And I, we sat down with David Link. I was sitting at a, a dinner with David Langston. Langston last Friday and I was telling him about this and he says, Ann, I do that every day. He said, this works. <laughs> and I said, oh, because I know he studies a lot. And uh, I thought that was very interesting. The research says that it will it will make your satisfaction as a Christian increase by over 
and your busyness will decrease because you will, it helps your mind clear and God's blessing you and you'll be less busy, less focused. You'll be less frantic. It's a good tool. I, I, I'm sort of fascinated by this tool that it'll, you'll be 50% less busy because you're meditating on God's word and you realize the impact and what you're here for and your purpose and how you're serving God. I don't, I haven't done this, <laughs> but I want to. And of course, it, the idea is that you repeat it every day. You write a scripture, next day you meditate on it. You write a scripture and you put it in a cheap notebook. So they, the, the research on this is really good. Okay, I want to review now because that's a good teaching technique, y'all. After you present information, you review it. I want if you're auditory, good sources to your Bible project, sixty-six videos. Sorry. If you need the story in order, the big picture, think about getting the story or the blue letter Bible. If you need to think about a specific topic. Use a con concordance uh, or God's promises. If you need a journal, I hope you do. I hope this is a takeaway you come from this lesson that you'll think about doing this, trying this method to increase your spiritual meditation daily. And we're not talking about two hours, we're talking about 10 to 15 minutes. I think that's interesting. Now, there is a book that I want to hold up and tell you about. Uh, they should, the one that's the uh, what the Bible is all about. This book is no longer in print. I'm so sorry. My husband said that when he ordered, I've asked him to start getting them off of Amazon. And they sent him a note that he'd gotten the last copy, and I don't know if that's true or not. But we used to give this to our children, but this you can teach children and it'll teach you the entire Bible using this book. But it's out of print. And the lady has the the family has said they're not going to re they're not going to post it. Who's the author? Uh, Doctor Meyer, uh, Doctor Hannah Myers, is, but she she passed away. And her family has decided to not do it. But when I went to that workshop this weekend, they told me that anything that is out of print, that it is legal to di digitize it and put it online for free. <laughs> I'm going to check that out because I don't want to do it. I don't want to violate any copyright. But if it is, Angela Howard and I have a project this summer. <laughs> <laughs> and I've already talked to her about it. Because if we can digitize that and have that available, that, won't that be wonderful? Because that is such a good children's book. And uh, it's what the Bible is all about for young explorers. And uh, another one, another source of course, I put down here about Tony Kite and his book about the 185 that to use with children, the songs. And I'll give you all more information about that if y'all need it. And then there's a lady that I asked Courtney to get this, the licensed horses of the congregation. She told me she at Wood. And it's called Mary Kate at teachsundayschool.com because it is so rich with all materials. Make sure you want to hold up that little Another one of the cards. For five dollars, you can get a flash card to that will give you a summation, just basic of each book of the Bible. It'll give you the big picture, and then you can just read that book, and then you can keep on. You can buy. It. She has all of them available for five dollars, and we also can. I don't. I haven't got permission from Courtney yet. I want to make sure I don't teach you to take something online we're not supposed to take. <laughs> But I think we have a, a, a no, we now have a license for the whole community, congregation. So you can use this material and you can just print it off yourself online if you want to. But for $5, don't waste your ink. Cartridges of ink cost $100 nowadays. <laughs> and so, but anyway, that's an idea. So, in summary, I want to be still and know that God is God. Please accept his gift, his love letter that he gives you every day. I want you to enjoy your walk with God. I want you to listen to God and have daily fellowship with him. He'll give you trust and confidence and peace and relief. And he'll give you understanding of your purpose here on earth. 
and why you are where you are right now. God is intentional. He has you exactly where he wants you to be right now because you're serving him. So for the past, your past, or your present, and for our future, eternity, be still and know that I am God. I have two new favorite verses. verses. Proverbs 9, 17. I love those who love me and those who diligently seek me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. And then 2 Peter 1, 2. May grace and peace be lavished on you. Mm, how wonderful. Lavished, y'all. That's a love letter. <laughs> love. As you grow in the rich knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. <laughs>